Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Gonna be giving you my starting eleven prediction for our game against Southampton. So I'm gonna go with David De Gea in goal. I said that David De Gea will remain our number one this season. David De Gea has really, really impressed me this season. You know, he's made quite a lot of good saves in a lot of games, but there's been a few games where he really has, hasn't had much to do. This is his 10th season at Manchester United, so he has been a long servant. He has made over 400 appearances for the football club in all competitions. He's made over 300 appearances in the Premier League. He's won everything domestically at the football club and he has won individual awards reflecting on his good performances. It was only September of last year that he signed a four-year deal with £375,000 a week. David De Gea has got no intentions of leaving Manchester United at this present time. But when he does eventually leave the football club, he will go back to Spain. Main explanations is because he was born in Spain, his relatives are from Spain, his girlfriend's from Spain, and he began his footballing career in Spain with Atletico Madrid. We paid, was it just, just over £18 million for him? <coughs> Now, right back, we will go with Anwan Basaka if he is available. He should be available though. Anwan Basaka has had a problem with his ankle. He came off in our form one win against Istanbul Basakshia. I think Anwan Basaka has done well in quite a few lot of games this season, you know, he's so good attacking in 10 and his defensive contributions being good. But there has been a couple of games where he has looked off the pace. This season is his second season at Manchester United. We got him in the summer of 2019. We got him from Crystal Palace in a deal worth £50 million. Now, if I'm Wan Bissaka, he's not available, then I think we'll go with Timothy Fossa Mensa at right back. Fossa Mensa, I think he's only started like four times for the club in three and a half years. There was reports coming out yesterday saying that we've offered Fossa Mensa a new contract because apparently Solskjaer wants to keep him at the club. Last season, we triggered a one-year extension on his contract. He did actually play a few games towards the end of last season. And he played the game against Crystal Palace in on the opening day of the season, I think. <laughs> now, the two centre-halves, Victor Lindelof and Harry Maguire, Now, Victor Lindelof should be available for this game. Victor Lindelof's obviously had a problem with his back. Now, I think Victor Lindelof has enjoyed some good games this season. He's also enjoyed a lot of bad games as a Man United player, and I still do have reservations about him. Lindelof's enjoyed a good three years or so now at the football club. We paid £31 million for him from Benfica back in 2017. Now, if Fitz Lindelof wasn't to be available, then I think we'll go with Axel Tuanzebe alongside Harry Maguire. Now, Axel Tuanzebe, I've been impressed with him in some of the games he's played in since he come back. He really, really impressed me in the game against PSG early on in the season. That game against PSG was his first start for Man United in 10 months. 
Axel Tuanzebe has obviously come off the bench a few times. Solskjaer was talking about Axel Tuanzebe prior to the Chelsea game earlier on in the season. And he's he said he challenged him to add consistency to ensure he has a long career at Man United. But obviously, Oli, he's hopeful that he does remain injury three. Now, Harry Maguire, he's really, really rejuvenated himself. Recently, Harry Maguire has been very, very effective in the air. His distribution's been good. He's kept the ball well. And yeah, Harry Maguire did have early season troubles. He had that instant in Greece before the start of the season. He sustained a few knocks and don't forget he got sent off in England's 1-0 defeat to Denmark earlier on in the season. He is our current captain and is the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment because we got him in a deal worth £80 million. Left back, I think we'll go with Alex Tellez. Alex Tellez has made an impact so far. Telez was very, very good against Istanbul, Basakshia. He was also good against West Brom. That was his Premier League debut. And he was also good on his Champions League debut against PSG. We paid around £15.4 million for him, with add-ons included. And Teles signed a four-year contract with the football club, I think with an option of a further year. Now, in the midfield, I think we're going to go with Donny van der Beek and Fred. Now, I think Donny van der Beek needs to start this game against Southampton. Donny van der Beek has not yet made his full Premier League debut for the football club. Now, he has been getting his chances in Europe. You know, Donny van der Beek started against Istanbul, Basakshia, and he was playing in a deeper role. You know, that's his predominant position, and that's where he's more effective. He was very, very good against Istanbul, Basakshia. Um, when we started him against RB Leipzig, we put him in that number 10 role. Donny van der Beek did reveal during the international break that Solskjaer told him to be patient and wait for his opportunities. Donny van der Beek said he would have loved to have played a lot more at Man United this season. You know, we paid £40 million for him from Ajax. I can assure, I can almost assure that he will start if Paul Pogba isn't available. Now, I don't think Paul Pogba's going to start anyway, even if he is available. He could be involved in the game. Paul Pogba has been out with a ankle injury. You know, he's missed our last two games. Pogba's only started like two of our last nine games, hasn't he? Now, don't forget, during the international break, Paul Pogba made a few comments saying like, this season has been the most difficult period in his career and he said playing for France is a breath of fresh air. And in general, he was talking about his struggles at Man United this season. And during the international break and all of that, Didier De Jomps, the France manager, was talking a lot about Paul Pogba, saying that, you know, he cannot be happy at Man United for being left on the bench and for playing out of position. And he, he was basically saying that he understands Paul Popper better than Solskjaer. 
But reflect on Paul Popper's comments the other week, you know, Paul Popper did receive a lot of criticism. There has been no talks over getting him a long-term contract at the club. Earlier on in the season, we triggered that one-year extension on his contract, so Pob is under contract with the football club till 2022. Obviously, Pobber wasn't happy when we triggered that one-year extension on his contract. Now, I'm expecting him to leave the football club next year. He actually said the other week that he's intended on leaving the club on a free transfer, but we won't want to won't let him go on a free transfer. Obviously, we'll want to cash in for the player. Now, Pob has obviously been relentlessly linked with a move to Real Madrid. He made an admission earlier on this season saying that one day's dream is to join Real Madrid. There's obviously been talks about him going back to Juventus. PSG and Barcelona have been in for him before. This is his fifth season at the football club since he rejoined. He's made over 100 appearances for Man United in all competitions. He's won three trophies at the club. That was the Europa League, the League Cup and the Community Shield. And yeah, he's only had a good couple of periods at Man United. As it stands at the moment, he is our most expensive signing because we paid £89 million for him. For the vast majority of last season, he was out because he had that ankle injury. But during the summer, uh, Pobba's agent, Mini Raleola, came out and said that Paul Pob wants to stay at the football club and he will hold talks over a new long-term contract. But yeah. So like I say, yeah, revert back to what I said about Donny van der Beek. He will start if Paul Pobbino isn't available. And yeah, I think it will be Fred alongside one of them. Uh, because like I said, Fred is undroppable, reflecting on his good performances. Fred was really, really good against Istanbul, Basaksia. And Fred in general has really, really improved under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. Under the Jose Mourinho era, Fred received a lot of criticism, but Fred never really got his opportunities under the Jose Mourinho era. Fred's been with us now a few years. We paid like £47 million for him from Shakhtar Donetsk. Now, ahead of them two, it will be Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes is undroppable. Bruno Fernandes is definitely Manchester United's best player. He's the best signing we've probably probably made since Alex Ferguson's retirement. Bruno Fernandes did score twice against Istanbul Basaksehir. He scored the retaken penalty against West Brom. He scored twice against Everton, also got an assist. So without Bruno Fernandes, I think we'd be in a worse position than we are already in. In the vast majority of his games, he's been very, very consistent. There's only been a couple of games where he has looked off the pace, Bruno Fernandes. His worst game in the Manchester United shirt was the Istanbul Basakshi one. Because he was... That was in Turkey because he was dispossessed around 34 times. But yeah, Fernandes has endured almost a year now at Manchester United. He scored 21 goals in 35 games and he's provided around 15 assists. Last season, won Premier League Player of the Month twice and he also won some at Musby Player of the Year award. We paid €55 million Euros for him from Sport in Lisbon back in January. Uh, Solskjaer said, by the way, that Bruno Fernandes does need a rest, but it's going to be difficult to see how Man United will cope without him in the team. Because we have played him a hell of a lot. Now, I think... On the right, we will go with Marcus Rashford. 
I could go on the left, but I think either way he will start. Uh, Marcus Rashford did start on the right against Istanbul Basakshia. That was a surprise because Rashford doesn't play a lot on that right hand side. A lot of the time he plays on that left hand side. But yeah, I thought he was very good against Basakshia. Obviously scored the penalty. Rashford has scored a few goals in the league this season. You know, he scored late on against Paris. That was the second time he'd done that. And he also scored a hat-trick against RB Leipzig. Became the second Man United player to score a hat-trick as a substitute. Rashford's really, really improved under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. There's been a couple of games this season where he's looked off the pace. You know, he weren't great against West Brom, but... I think against West Brom in our last league game, he wasn't fully fit because he'd just been out with a shoulder problem. And reflecting on that, he missed um, England's game, was it, with Iceland. Rashford turned 23 a few weeks ago. He's been at Man United now for over 15 years in total because Rashford's been in United play since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. So... He's been in our senior squad now for over four years or so. But yeah, we could start him on the right. Uh, Anthony Martial. I think we will also start him against Southampton. Now, Martial did very, very well against Istanbul Pesachia. Uh, made some very, very good runs in that. He was playing on that left-hand side against Istanbul Basakshir and Solskjaer giving his verdict on that. And he said he's happy that he's back on that left-hand side because he was playing a lot centrally last season and he did put some good performances out. But prior to the Istanbul Basakshir game, Martial's enjoyed a pretty bad start to the season. You know, Solskjaer explained why Martial struggled this season. This was prior to the Pesacci game and he said it was largely down to the three-match suspension he had in the Premier League because, don't forget, he got sent off in our 6-1 defeat to Tottenham. But in reality, he shouldn't have been sent off. But Solskjaer obviously backs him to rediscover his form. And he basically said, you know, Martial cannot rest on his laurels. Martial's enjoyed a good five years or so now at the club. He was good last season under Solskjaer and he was good in his debut season under the Louis van Gaal era. I think we got him in a deal worth like, was it 57 or 58 million pounds from Monaco. And up top, um, Edison Cavani. If Edison Cavani starts on Sunday, it will be his full Premier League debut for the football club. Cavani made his first start for Man United against Istanbul Basakshia. And he was very, very good. I like the way he linked up the play. His hold-up play was good and he made some good runs, didn't he? Cavani also impressed me when he came on against West Brom. He also scored his first goal for the club in our 3-1 win against Everton. And he, he scored, almost scored with his first touch when he came on against Chelsea. We got Edison Cavani on a free transfer. As you all know, he signed a two-year contract with Man United with around 230 grand a week. And he currently wears that number seven shirt. So yeah, so that's your starting 11 prediction for the game. Now, Eric Bay. He's available, but I don't think he'll start. He's just recovered from a muscle injury. That's my only element of concern about Eric Bay. You know, he's too injury prone. Uh, Luke Shaw, he's out with a hamstring injury. He's out for four to six weeks with this. Again, it's my only element of concern. Luke Shaw's too injury prone. But Luke Shaw's had a pretty good career at Man United. He's enjoyed a good six years or so at the football club. We paid £30 million for him from Southampton back in 2014. Phil Jones, he's still out with injury. Jesse Lingard, as you all know, he's self-isolating because he came into contact with someone with COVID-19. Uh, Mason Greenwood. 
he's available. I don't think Mason Greenwood will start this game though, but could possibly be involved. We've had quite a few issues with Mason Greenwood this season. You know, he's had personal issues, he's had quite a few injuries. Obviously, he's been out with illness. Uh, Greenwood did well, though, when he when he came on against Istanbul Basakshir. You know, created a few goal-scoring opportunities and also got an assist. Solskjaer was talking about Mason Greenwood, though, wasn't he? He's been talking about, a lot about him this season. You know, Solskjaer's been defending him, saying, you know, that he has enjoyed a fantastic year. This is his second season in our senior squad. Mason Green could even start, but, you know, I don't think he will. Uh, Juan Matter, you know, do you think he could be involved? You know, we will have to see. But, yeah, this is a big game for Manchester United on Sunday. It's going to be a tough game. You know, Southampton are in good form. They are unbeaten in their last seven games. And they have the second best home record this season. And Southampton have got a good manager in Ralph Hassan Huttle. I've got to give him credit. You know, he has really, really turned Southampton around. Southampton were good, though, under Mauricio Potocino because don't forget Mauricio Potocino guided them to their highest ever finish in the Premier League era. Southampton have got some good players in their team, obviously. They've obviously got Danny Innes. The good news is, from Manchester United perspective, that Danny Innes is out with injury and he's not going to be available for Sunday. Uh, Nathan Redmond, he's also a good player. Again, he's out with injury. They've got Obifemi of Southampton now. He's quite good. Uh, they've got Theo Walcott. Uh, they've got him on loan from Everton. They've got that Chi Adams. They've got Romeo. They've got Kyle Walker-Peters. They've got Ryan Bertrand, who I think is good. They've got that Vestigard. They've got Stuart Armstrong. So Southampton have got some good players. Like I mentioned on the preview yesterday, they have lost quite a few players, Southampton. You know, they lost Charlie Austin. He went to West Brom. They lost... Cedric Saws, he went to Arsenal. They lost Holberg, I think he went to Tottenham. They also lost Mario Lamina because he went out on loan. They've obviously lost quite a few players to Liverpool in recent years. You know, don't forget they lost Nathaniel Klein. They lost Virgil van Dijk. They lost Dejar Lovren. They lost Adam Lallana. You know, they lost Sergio Mane. So there you go. And back in 2014, don't forget, they lost Luke Shaw to us. Now, we've got um, a pretty good record at St Mary's. I think we've played like 15 times there since they've been playing at St Mary's and we've won like 10 out of 15. Uh, the game at St Mary's last season was 1-1 and the game at Old Trafford was 2-2. If Southampton do win this game, they will go into the top four because Southampton at the moment are currently sitting fifth in the Premier League and that's good to their standards. They've registered 17 points from their opening nine league games and I think we're currently sitting in 10th. After Southampton, we do play PSG. PSG is going to be a difficult game. You know, if we can get a point against PSG or a point against RB Leipzig, we do qualify for the knockout stage. We've done very, very well in Europe. And after PSG, 
we play West Ham. That's a game Man United should win. Then we've got Leipzig and then we have got Manchester City. So games are coming up thick and fast for Man United. As you all know, we are making plans for next year. Next year, Man United are obviously looking to make more signings. Uh, there has been a lot of players on our agenda. I give you the news on Hakan Kalahanglu yesterday. Bill's Christian Fark said that it's very, very likely that Hakan Kalahanglu will join Man United next summer. And it says we are in advanced talks with his agent. He's into the final year of his contract with AC Milan. Now, Samuel Chukwueze, who plays for Villarreal, it says we've also been interested in him. That's stemming from La Razion, which is a Spanish publication. I give you the news on him yesterday. Usman Dembele, it says, you know, we could be going back in for him next year. Jaden Sancho, it says we're also going to go back in for him next year. Don't forget he was our number one priority target during the summer transfer window. Uh, recently said we revived our interest in Jack Grealish. Uh, Diet Opiamicano, I think we're going to go in for him next summer because he's going to be available for around £36 million because that's when his release clause does become active. Uh, David Carmo from Braga, he said a few weeks ago that he was on our agenda. Dan Axel Zagadou from Dortmund, he's been on our agenda. Well, he said a few weeks ago he was. Erling Haaland, you know, could also go back in for him next year. But I think Manchester United need a right winner and we also need a centre-half. They are the two priorities. But we are looking to make a couple of signings in January. We're also going to focus on the outgoings next year because there's still Deadwood at the football club that we do need to get rid of. And I think next year we're going to get rid of Jesse Lingard. He may leave next summer. He might not leave in January. I think we're going to get rid of Jones. He could go in January. I think we're going to get rid of Rojo. He could also go in January. I think we're also going to get rid of Sergio Romero. Because Romero is our third choice goalkeeper. Matic could leave next year. Because like I said he's lost his place in the team. Juan Mata could leave. Daniel James could possibly leave. Because he's been out of form. And his appearances now are limited at Man United. Daniel James. I think Cagallo will leave when his loan expires in January. There's obviously been rumours of Brandon Williams going out on loan in January. It says Southampton are interested in getting him on loan. Brandon Williams is now our third choice left back following the arrival of Alex Tellez. And there's been obviously rumours of Dean Henderson going out on loan in January. It actually said that. Henderson wants to go out on loan in January, but Solskjaer said prior to the istanbul Basakshi game that Dean Henderson wants to stay at Man United and he wants to play for the club. He is our second-choice goalkeeper, isn't he? But yeah, like I've said, uh, Solskjaer needs more backing at the football club because I don't think he has been backed enough by the board. None of our managers have been backed enough since Sir Alex Ferguson left. So Moyes hasn't been back. To, Moyes wasn't backed enough. Van Gaal wasn't backed enough. Mourinho wasn't backed enough, and Solskjaer has not been backed enough. And Oli revealed a few times during the summer transfer window that he was very infuriated with the board. But Woodward came out uh, the other week and he said that Man United remain absolutely committed to Solskjaer despite our poor start to the season. Like I said, there's. Few issues at the club that Ollie's got to solve. Um, he's obviously got to solve the Paul Pogba issue. He's got to identify his best eleven. He's got to select the right formation. Ollie has gone a lot with a four-two-three-one formation since he got appointed in as Man United manager. A few times he's gone with that four-three-three, and in the big games he's gone with a three-five-two. So there you go. 
I don't think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the long term for Manchester United. I really, really don't. But a lot of pressure would have eased off him recently because we have won our last three games in a row in all competitions. So if we beat Southampton on Sunday, it will be our fourth win in a row in all competitions, won't it? You know, Solskjaer has been Manchester United manager now for almost two years. Next month is his two-year anniversary at the club. He has got a contract with Man United until 2022 and he's managed over 100 games for the club in all competitions. If Man United could win a trophy this season and if we could finish in the top four, that would represent a very, very good season for us and then that would give us something to build on, wouldn't it? So, yeah. Anyway, guys, on my next video, I'll be giving my reaction to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's press conference. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.